bought myself a new random toy a couple weeks ago and for the last couple weeks it's just been a driveway speed bump. So I thought I'd bring you guys along as I hook it up and see if it even works. I have no idea. This is exactly how I bought it. And I just took my engine hoist, took it off the trailer, set it right here and been driving over it. This is exactly how I got it. Just this hydraulic unit disconnected. Um, I looked over it for a second. It looks like this is something you would mount to the wall somewhere in your shop and in doing so they've just you know just took say a regular 100 US 120 volt plug they've used hard you know hard electrical wire because you're not really moving it around but I'll probably change that out to flexible um, looks like this is a reservoir down here because this pulls out and there's some sort of dipstick I believe yet yeah, some sort of dipstick it's registering a little bit of fluid so maybe that's enough to it might have been for me to slosh in it. Maybe that's enough to make it go. I don't know. There was a pretty big grease pile from where I got this from. Uh, it looks like the hydraulic fittings right here to hook it up to. This is either release or go. It seems to only have one function and there's a switch right here, which I assume is up. I don't know the age of the unit or even the brand. The data plate's kind of worn off. I'll have to show you. But we're just going to go for it. We're just going to plug it in. Plugged in and contact. Nothing. Well, that's brutal. So, we gotta dig a little deeper. I don't know what all this duct tape's about. So, we opened it up to look at the switch, make sure all the wires were tight and everything in here, and everything looks good. Um, this switch that I'm pushing on is actually two micro switches that actually just connect the hot and the neutral. So, I mean, all you pretty much have it coming in this just being 120 volts, you just have a neutral line and a hot line, so and a ground, but you just have pretty much a black and a white line actually just coming in. So, I can see the hot over there, and all I did was just connect my lead right to the plug, come over to the hot, and it comes up, and it actually feeds back out right here, connects this over to here, and we can push our button and see, oops, I'm going to put it on the hot one, and it connects. So I push the button, it connects. So we do the same thing with the neutral. I'll just come over to the neutral lead, and I see it comes up, and I can actually just see the neutral wire. This is where it comes in, and actually when I touch where it comes in, where it should be connected directly to here, nothing. Um, so it, the power, the neutral isn't even coming up to here. So I come over to where it ties in over here, touch over here, nothing. So I have a break somewhere in this cord or probably right at this plug because you should never use hard uh, Romex like this directly into a plug. You just, it just never flexes in and it's just a electrocution and a fire hazard waiting to happen so I'm going to replace out the cord anyway so out with the old and in with the new we just took a uh, this is just a short extension cord for actually snow blower electric starts and I just cut off the female end this is more than ample to handle this motor especially for the intermittent duty it's a 16 gauge 3 but I even added a strain relief on top like there should have been there was not one before I want to put it right on the top so moment of truth Let's actually plug it in. No sparky sparky and it worked. I think we're out of fluid. Blue's not supposed to come out of the air. There's a one way, that's supposed to just be an air bleed. So it's leaking out of this port, which is not good. Because this is actually a, um, this is a double acting cylinder. So you have, you have your main rod here, 
and then you have a big flat essentially disc right in the middle of this cylinder with some o-rings and stuff around it and seals and if fluid pushes in this side it pushes that up here and it's attached directly to here and if fluid pushes in here it pushes down well in this application all you need is a lifting and then gravity will push it down so nothing should be here so if any fluids in here more than likely what's happening is that seal and wipers in the middle attached to here that fluids pushing up from here is actually going around the seal and filling up the other side of the chamber so those seals are blown and they need to be rebuilt because I pulled out uh, this cylinder is probably almost halfway full now uh, a third of the way full of fluid on this side which it shouldn't have been and that might have been why I was retired but maybe it'll still work uh, we'll have to see how much fluid wants to pass and more fluid is going to want to pass if this is actually under pressure say a vehicle's on it more fluid is going to want to pass by and leak and it might be usable now but we may have to uh chances are is actually just replace the cylinder versus rebuild it we've rebuilt a lot of cylinders but if i can't locate a brand or something on here um it might be more work actually trying to find the appropriate wipers and seals and stuff than actually just uh buying a new cylinder figured let's throw a 2,500 pound car up on it and see how well it does. What's up? Um, more fluids leaking past and getting another one, but it lifted it up. Oh, there we go. Now we're just pouring fluid. It's pushing enough fluid past the cylinder that's holding it that it's just leaking out now. So, looks like we definitely need to do the seals in the cylinder. So, let me try to let it down before it just, just destroys my whole driveway with fluid. It's pretty cool. Two feet doesn't, it's not all the way up. Two feet doesn't sound like very high but that's actually pretty dang high. You can do a lot of stuff as, as far as suspension and stuff like that. If you were doing a muffler or something, you could really drop in the gas tank. You could really get up, up under there and see stuff you normally couldn't do, which is jack stands and other things. I mean, this is like jack stands times eight. So very cool. Now I've got to clean up all this darn hydraulic fluid oil that I got all over my driveway that's going to stain it. Um, I actually picked up this stuff. Uh, this one's actually, I picked it up at an auction. I bought the entire garage contents. I'd never actually used it before, but decided to try it out. And it is the best driveway degreaser I have ever used. And even though this is an old can, they still sell it. So I'll put a link in the description of where you can get, off, get this off of Amazon delivered right to you this exact same stuff is just not in a metal can anymore but this will clean my driveway my concrete driveway completely down to where you can't even tell there was ever a stain there I've been going crazy with this stuff and absolutely loving it But let's pull this out. It doesn't, I can feel some grab and it feels like metal on metal. I'm sure this cylinder bore is just destroyed. And the seal looks like the 
The seal is obviously worn out, completely gone. I got a split in it. And I see a lot of metal to metal contact on this uh, flange. So none of that's good. I was kind of hoping that it was rebuildable, but I doubt it is. It doesn't look super pretty or smooth, does it? I don't think it is. Halfway down I see what looks like a ridge. I don't know. I don't think she's salvageable. So this cylinder is junk. This is a little breather port and apparently it probably got pressure washed. There's a bunch of time water got in there and water kind of sat in the top part and actually pitted the entire inside of the cylinder. Um, so it's not usable. So I went out and I found the next cheapest alternative. This cylinder right here I can buy back from the manufacturer for about 400, maybe 500 bucks somewhere in there. And the cheapest alternative is this, a tie rod cylinder. And it's called a tie rod cylinder because it has tie rods holding the two end caps on and these sit in there with O-rings versus a welded cylinder. Um, problem with the tie rod cylinder, first they're way cheaper. I actually found this one uh, at a freight damage for 30 bucks. Paid 30 bucks for it, but this is probably only about a hundred dollar cylinder. Is they're longer. It's a fair amount longer than a standard cylinder. You can see they have the exact same length, but you see where this pin is, where this pin is. I mean, we have an extra almost six inches, so it doesn't fit in this uh, in this tight area that I have here. Um, this pin right here, this pin location has to stay in front of this bar because this bar comes up. So this whole platform comes up and it needs to be able to pivot down. This side over here, I can push it back um, almost any distance I want uh, to, a, to a degree. The problem is, is it's, you can't really tell right now, but this pin is technically higher than this pin because it raises up. If I put this pin this pin back here higher than this pin, it'll want to bind down first and then it'll probably pop up. So what I'm going to do is I can position this, put it back on here. I can position this and put this new pin, I can weld it back to here and keep it as low as possible. It's really not much wider, maybe a quarter inch wider, you know, three millimeters, four millimeters, something like that wider. So that shouldn't matter if I can just cut off these tabs and weld them back further to accommodate this pin but at the front this is still way too long so I actually have a couple options I was thinking of one would be this is I can't weld to this this is cast iron and this is just threaded onto the uh, the steel um, shank which is uh, I think I called them they said this is cast iron for sure uh, this is chrome coated just with a thin layer of chrome but it's something like 70 25 or 70 45 steel something like that something you can weld to and that's evident by you know this being welded to it is I can actually just cut that off and weld that to there so we got the eye cut off of the old one and now I have it just tack welded onto the new one make sure it's nice and square with the uh, the rod and so now I got a wet rag down here with actually it's, it's winter so a chunk of snow in there keep this cold this is a um, 1045 steel and everything I read online said you can do it. It's not actually a big deal. It's like, I guess it's kind of a higher carbon steel. Um, I'm going to do it some 7018 uh, stick electrodes. And the only thing that I read people do different is to preheat it and uh, slow cool it maybe. But that didn't even seem to be that big a deal. But I'll preheat it. So I'll throw my oxyacetylene on here. Um, Love enough to steal. You have cherry red right there, and it's barely warm four inches away. Now it's weld. I used my plasma cutter just to zip these two tabs off. They were like this. And to bevel them and then I ground it down. 
And now I've been preheating it a little bit, and then I'm just going to put this, the uh, cylinder back on, see where I want it, because they're actually going to be a little bit closer than they were before. And we're just going to weld it. So this is a pretty thick plate. This is a um, half inch. Yeah, this is half inch plate, so, or it could be three eighths. And I'm just trying to preheat it, because this is a pretty big heat sink, so just preheating it so I can stick weld it. Exactly. So I flipped these tabs around and then I was thinking about it and I actually kind of ruined some of the strength of it because before all the force, with these flipped around, all the force was actually pushing this way and before it had all this meat and so it was actually pushing against, you know, this inch and a half, two inches of thickness of meat and by flipping it around, I'm now actually only pushing on quarter inch, but that's when it's up, when it's down, it's pushing on a lot thicker. So before it was a, just a solid tube pin in the middle so I actually added a third brace in between so just to beef it up it should be fine there's tons of strength there now just a matter of pinning it in see how well we lined them all up there we go it went in and then just pinning the top this is just gonna be a port this one got water in it before because it was just this open thing like this so any water that went in I mean anything that's sprayed on it could just go in and fall down there so I'll put this uh, this street elbow on here so water would have to go upwards and I'll just tighten that down so it's facing down and I'll put a plug in there just to, with a one little small drill hole because that side's unused and then the regular port will just attach into here and pump up and down so and so I just drilled a hole in these little hex allen um, fittings and I will put that I'll just install that in the bottom and it should give me no issues I'll use my brand new I've been trying these out I bought these uh, a while back for my birthday my in-laws owed me something and these are probably some of the nicest I wanted some nice allen wrenches and I bought the best ones I could find and they're these Weira ones and they come pretty highly recommended they got some weird hex plus and they don't strip out they're probably the tightest Allen wrenches I've ever got. Like, you know, they just fit in these holes and just work. And the sizes are huge, you know, but very comfortable. So I'll put a link below if you guys want to check those out. Maybe I'll do a review later on these. But now I'll just pipe wrench this down another turn. And the air bleed is good. And there is plenty of oil in there, so it shouldn't ever surface rust. There was enough just from the factory they had oiled it up pretty decent and we'll just point it in the downward direction that should be good so i originally put this stuff in there um which ended up i had little bottles of it and it was really watery and thin and it seemed to write the right stuff this stuff was super thick so i've drained all that out because i didn't know the brand of this unit when i got it and it ends up being a ben pack which is a major brand and they suggest using atf so that's what I'm going to use is I'm just filling it back up. I just turned it on and it spit all that stuff out. And now I'm just filling it up with some uh, Dextron 3. And this should serve it good. Now we're going to make a mess. When I lifted up this car the other day, it almost hit, it was actually pushing up against the muffler and stuff in the middle. And looking at my Expedition, it's going to do about the same thing. And I got these running boards that sit lower. So what I'm going to have to do is put some blocks, and I think they actually sell professional blocks. These are wooden blocks, but they'll work. They're nice and cut and square and everything else. And so they'll come up and I've just aligned them so they hit on the frame. I'll raise it up a little bit and see where it sits.
It's a lot of weight. It makes you nervous. So part of the system is it's actually meant to be semi-movable. So it has these two wheels right here and here. They actually flip up. So there they're resting, but you flip them up, flip over that little tab, and now it's off the ground just, just barely. And then on that end, there's just a, a hole, just a round hole. So I had to just made up something real fast. Just made up this bar with this T-handle, some old jack wheels, paint still wet, piece of 3 8 plate and a little peg so I can come over here it's heavy but should be able to position it put it somewhere or whatever so now I just have to hide it from the neighbors or else I'll never see the end of doing brake jobs and rotating tires and stuff. Thanks for watching guys. See you soon. Have a good one. Bye. So I ended up putting just one of those industrial cord protectors over the hydraulic hose. Um, but I don't think I'm going to like that. So I just threw this chunk of metal over the fitting so nobody steps on it. But I'm going to put some quick disconnects. Just get some hydraulic quick disconnects so you can snap it in and out. And so it's completely separate. You want to catch a stick? Ready? Ready? Yeah, it doesn't stand a chance.